Hello everyone, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you how you can switch from one level in your game to another by using a trigger zone in order to do so. So in order to create a zone like this little doorway here, where when the player enters will immediately switch to a different level, let's go ahead and create a new game object inside of our scene. So I'll minimize the tile map here, and let's right click and create a new empty game object. So I could call this something like level move here. And the component it's going to need is going to be a collider. So we could do box collider 2D. Now, because this isn't a collision object, we don't need it to have a rigid body attached to it. But what we do need to do is check is trigger because this is used for triggering an event, which is to switch the level from one level to another. So before we move the level object, let's also assign a icon to it so that we can visibly see it on our map. So I might give it um, a little dot here, or if I want it to be a little bigger, uh, we could choose a green label over here. So that way we'll be able to see it even though it doesn't have a sprite attached. So let's edit the collider shape and shrink it quite dramatically. Let's bring in the top edges too, and down there as well. So now I can left click, press and hold on the position and we can adjust it to the location we need it to be. So we could pop it in right about there. So now that we have a box collider with is trigger, if we write a script and attach it to this object, we'll be able to use the on trigger enter 2D function. And that's what we're gonna use to switch levels. So I created a simple script for this. I'll go ahead and attach it to our object here. And let's open it up and talk about it. So I'm going to open the script here. Okay, so you can see that we have one public variable, the scene build index. You can either use an integer value to represent the scene, or you can use the name of the scene. The reason I'm using the build index instead is that you may decide sometime while you're building your game that the names of your scenes would change. And if that's the case, you wouldn't want it to break the reference here uh, between your scenes because you changed the name. So I think that scene build index probably would be a little bit of a safer bet in the long run. So private void on trigger enter 2D is the uh, function you need to override here. It needs to be exactly like this. And it takes a collider 2D named other. So this other object is the game object that basically walked into the area. So we want to check if it is a player. And there's several ways of doing this. Uh, one way that I do like is to check the tag and see if the tag is set to player. So we compare the tag to a string since the tag on the game object is just a string as well. Another way to do it would be other dot get component of type player here and just pop that in there. So if we can check in one way or another that the object that entered is a player and not just any random collider 2D, then we can do our scene switching. So in order to switch scenes, you need to do the scene manager dot load scene. Uh, so there's several overrides of this, but the one I'm using uses the scene build index, and then we're setting the load scene mode as single. So the reason for doing dot single rather than dot additive is so that at any time when you switch levels, there can only be one level loaded at the same time. So I think that makes the most sense for my purposes here. So as for that scene build index, you can see that since we made it a public variable, we can set the number here. And where do we find that? Well, if we go up to the top, and we go to file and then build settings and the unity menu, then we can see the scenes in the current build. So we can see scenes slash house is a build index of zero and scenes slash outside is a build index of one. You can add more scenes to this list. You can add open scenes, but the order here should not change unless you manually move it around like this. Okay, so house is zero and outside is one here. So since house is zero and outside is one, we want to switch from this house scene to the outside scene. So we need to put in the build index of one here. So I'm going to go over here, scene build index one, and then that'll mean that we'll switch from the house scene to the level scene. So the last thing we'll need to do before we hit play and test is to go to our player object and make sure that the tag is set to player here. You can also create your own custom tags. This can be anything you want it to be. Uh, I think the player tag is just built in, so it makes sense to just use that. You can also see here that currently I don't have it attached to the prefab, but it definitely should be. So if you see it all bolded, you might want to right click it and do apply to prefab player so that every player object is actually a player object. So now that this is a player object, it's going to walk on there, should trigger the event, and we switch to scene one, which is outside. So let's go ahead and test that by hitting play. I'm going to walk into the zone and there we switch scenes. Now you can see, of course, though, that when we enter the new scene, a player object is not spawned here, so we can't move around as of yet. 
So I will go ahead and cover that in another video. But for right now, that's going to be it for me. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future Unity content.